Hey everyone, Sterling here from Day Trading Forex Live. We're going to be taking a look at the pound today. It looks like we've completed the overall third uh, third push down in the in the cycle here on a weekly basis, and we're al we're also coming into you know not just that, and we'll zoom out to the pound or the euro real quick. But on an intraday basis, we've had a clear third push down on, on the uh, the euro again, just to to kind of oversimplify uh, where we're at in the the overall push. But looking at the pound, one thing that that really can be useful, you know, is useful in this trade, and the reason why, again, I'll be taking the entry on the pound from this point, got filled at, at uh, 22 on on MB, and, uh, you know, roughly about the same price right now, but the point here with this trade, and the point where, the reason I'm making this video is because it's a good illustration of seeing a stop run at the end of, uh, you know, what looks like a, a W bottoming formation, or, or double bottom, but it's not just the fact that, you know, you're going to see double bottoms, double tops everywhere. Um, the, that in and of itself doesn't mean anything like one candle means something. It means something when it's in the context of where you're at in the overall smart money push. Being that we think we've come to the end of that the cycle of the downside, you put that in combination with the fact that we're now seeing a, uh, now saw a short-term stop run again, push below the lows of that last, uh, last first push down. And when this happened in the room, I wasn't taking the trade, and I said I want to see it pull back and again uh, test and show some rejection. And that's exactly uh, exactly what happened. Now it took a little bit of time; it's taken about two hours since we were originally talking about it in the room. But that's generally what you're going to see. You're not going to have to take the entry right off the bat. You're going to have plenty of time to enter when it comes back, as the market often does. Yeah, if it runs off, you know you're not going to get the trade. But generally, you're going to see it retest. And when you're coming to the end of the day or the end of what is the viable New York session, which is usually around 11 o'clock is when you see a lot of the movement stop um, or the, the, the probability of reversal become lower. And when I see, or excuse me, the, the probability of a continuation becoming lower and the probability of it reversing becoming higher, uh, when I'm coming into that time as it was here and as it really is right now, when I see a stop run, of a, in this case of the lows, or if it was a stop run of the highs, that gives me a lot stronger indication that okay, smart money, they're they're done with their move. They're creating a stop run to you know, why would they create a stop run? Well, if you induce a short position, what would be the purpose of that? Well, they create the stop run, drive it past the lows, create that selling pressure, and they're buying into the selling pressure. If they were short through this move down, which obviously they were, retail traders don't drive the market, banks do. So if they were short through this move down here, they have to find uh, they have to find sellers to buy their position back because they're if they're short they have to buy their position back and therefore they have to have somebody willing to uh, willing to sell it to them to, in order to buy their position back so their entire goal here at the end of a move is to create all the possible selling that they can buy into that selling pressure and that's exactly what they did here that's exactly what that stop run looks like I just want a little bit better entry because it started to run off a little too quick without us we're getting the better entry and uh, you know it's been been hovering here for quite a while, doing uh, exactly what we were talking about in the room, which is coming down, showing us further confirmation of the candles. Again, the candles don't mean much without the context of where you're at. And the overall smart money push, you put that in combination with the fact that you've seen a previous stop run, and that becomes a very uh, very convincing setup. And this one's going to allow for a 25 pip stop. It gets us below the, <clears throat> below the low of the stop run. And that's really where you want to be, putting your stop below a low or above a high is a dangerous proposition because you know very well you could see the stop run on the next push to it but when you've identified something as the stop run usually the stop run immediately marks the end of that move and therefore it, it is the true high or the true low if it's not a stop run it's it's as i said very dangerous to throw your stop above the high or below the low many people um, you know when i say this are probably going to have that aha aha or agreeing type moment where they say you know, I, I get the direction right, but it's like I get stopped out by a pip or two and the market turns. Well, that's not a coincidence. That the, That's not a coincidence because the stop run fulfills the purpose of creating supply. Uh, smart money needs supply to fill their demand. It's it's a pretty pretty basic principle, supply and demand, but this is the way it comes together. As you see the stop run, they create that supply. It fills their demand, and the price runs off from that point. Now, we waited a little bit longer again and uh, given another good opportunity. So... We're going to let this one run a bit, and we will come back with an update. And uh, we'll be back in a little bit, guys.
All right, guys, we're back on the pound for a quick update. Just got out of the room, as I mentioned, in the room. Uh, I'm going to be closing half at this point. Actually, half closed half at this point. It's about a pip or two above where I closed. Uh, but closing out for about 53, 54 pips on the first half. And the reason I'm doing that is because, again, we're coming in, you know, number one, it's a, it's a holiday market. So the, the amount of follow-through we have is really questionable. You could in a low vol volume market have a lot of follow through it could be a huge amount of follow through but that that's a question that uh, I can't guarantee to either side which is why I'm playing it a bit safe with that second retest into 5900 that failed I'm just playing a little bit safe again taking half off around 5354 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to throw the stop below the spike low with non farm again if that's the stop run if that was what they took out stops to the low with they're not going to come back and, and create a stop run on a stop run, essentially. And so because of that, I'll be, I'll be throwing the stop on the last half just below that. And uh, I will not hold this trade through the weekend. I will be closing this one before the, clo before the, uh, before the close today at 5 p.m. The reason for that, again, we're in a holiday market. There's no saying that we're not going to have a retest of these lows. And uh, don't really want to work through all that because, again, if the profit's there, you know, you're always asking yourself, is the risk worth the reward? And at that point, I just don't think we're we're biased enough to uh, to take that. So I'm glad a couple of you guys caught it in, in the room. We had, uh, again, the, the reason for the setup is we had an initial bottoming formation on the pound dollar. This is after, you know, again, this is what we saw as three levels down, and we had this this what looks like a essentially a fourth push because the euro and the swissy had not completed their third push so because the euro and the swissy were going to make their third push put pressure to the pound to the downside and as it came through the previous lows during new york which we typically uh, typically see reversals during the new york session we had this nice bottoming formation in addition to the stop run giving us the indication that they were taking out the lows, triggering any further selling they can and buying into the selling pressure. Now, again, uh, in the room, we did not have the entry, but I said if we come down, we make another test that is rejected back up. That's where the entry uh, would be a much safer, would be a much safer entry from that point. We got that about 30 minutes after leaving the room and we've had a, a decent follow through from that point. Now, Generally, I, I I would say not to hold for, and this is why I said in the room is, generally I don't like to hold through, if I'm not getting, in other words, if I'm not getting price improvement rather rather quickly, I don't want to hold through hours of of accumulation. But again, there's just so much there. It wasn't like this was on the second cycle and we were taking a uh, retracement trade against the smart money trend. We believe the smart money trend is over to the downside for the temporary. If that's the case. Uh, then we could have a little bit more faith because the the reward would be higher uh, from obviously from the overall lows and that's why I had a bit more faith in the pound and why uh, you know why again I wanted to hold it so I will come back to update this trade uh, as I said I have half off it at around 53 54 pips and we will update this trade as we get in get in closer to uh, the weekend coming up getting getting in closer to 5 p.m. We'll go ahead and exit this trade uh, at whatever price we're at. So we'll be back in a little bit, see where we're at, and go from there. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to be closing here on the pound. You know, there's there's no telling that it won't break through the highs. The, the question here is, you know, really, when I start looking at the pound, is the, you know, again, is the risk of holding this trade worth the reward? Well, being in from 22 roughly up about 60 pips at this point in the last half and you know you start to measure from these from these lows we set and we've moved about 85 pips you know we're a little shy of that if you're marking from the start of the day yesterday but within that 24-hour period we're, we're about you know about hitting a, a daily range so considering that uh, I'm just gonna exit at this point also the fact that it's Friday we are in a less liquid market and uh, you know, considering all those facts, I think it's just probably the safe option to get out at this point. Now, with the pound, the the, the big point to take away from from the pound, and uh, you know, the reason we were talking about it in the room on Thursday, and the reason I was mentioning mentioning as a trade uh, setup was because of what we talked about in the video I just sent out. That video covered the levels, looking at the levels, understanding where you're at in the grand scheme of things. And as we look at the euro, the euro will give a good example of this and. Let me just 
I wasn't planning on popping this chart up, but we'll put this up real quick and uh, kind of go over this a little bit more for some, make the video actually useful. So we had this first push down. Again, we had the second push down. Again, we had the third push down. One thing I talk about in the video is to separate the levels, you want to see them at least 90 pips. You want to see it happen over the course of bare minimum you know, two and a half days tends to be about the minimum you're going to see because, again, it's a weekly cycle. They don't drive the price for five days. They, they, tend, they tend to drive the price for, on average, I would say three to four days, separate by 90 pip levels at least. And so when we look at each of these moves, and again, I'm, I'm looking at the euro to correlate with the pound. So this first push down was 100 and 127. The second push down was 132. Third push down was 120, 127. So again, if the euros made three cycles to the downside and starting to accumulate, then the possibility of this thing reversing up, I, I think, is much higher. And, and the little stop run we we had during the uh, during non-farm may very well be that last stop run before the move up. We, you know, at this point, uh, I think it's a there's some signs really giving us both ways and we may stay stuck in a range because that's typically a lot of times what you'll see at the end of a move and that's one of the reasons why again I was looking for the bounce on the pound so what I mean is if the if the euros completed three cycles of the downsides look at the look at the pound and we have you know again on over the same days we had the first push down second push down third push down and because the pound completed its its three cycles down before the euro and the Swissy, when the euro and the Swissy right here went to make their third swipe down, it essentially made what looks like a fourth swipe on the pound. So given the fact that the pound was clearly uh, done with its move, and both the euro, both the Swissy were done with their move, I was I was uh, done with their move on a weekly cycle again, three cycles to the downside that week, and. When I saw that, and we, we go into the 15 minute on the pound, keeping in perspective that all three of these pairs have hit their weekly cycle, I saw this this stop run starting to occur. It hit, formed a low, came back up. As it worked itself down, blew through the previous lows, was rejected back up, com completing you know that bottoming formation, that stop run bottoming formation. And what I said in the room was, you know, the market started to bounce, and I said, as it comes back down, if we get another retest of that point that it starts to get rejected back up that would be a valid entry when we saw that again at the end of the longer weekly time frame cycle uh, on on this day did the market move 90 pips that gives a strong indication that the move could be over it moved 100 pips so we had completed what generally tends to be the smart money move they at least moved the market 90 100 110 pips so at least hit that criteria gave me that bottoming stop run formation all three pairs had hit their weekly um, weekly third cycle and completed. So you put all that together, and for me, that was uh, enough to take a trade, and, and a couple of people in the room got it, so congrats to you as well on that trade. And, uh, you know, another factor here, this is something that really doesn't doesn't play into the, the smart money strategy, but if you think about how, it, it, if the banks drive the market, and if they've driven the price down and, and three cycles that means they've accumulated a, a position and they've allowed the price to drive down so they're, they're driving their position into profit uh, you know obviously and as it comes into uh, where they're gonna be looking to take profit they have to exit that position now accumulating is essentially the same thing they have to do when they exit a position they're they're exiting their position over time through a range bound stagnant market and that's why you often see the end of a move ending with a stop run because that's you know, again, if they were short, they have to buy it back. So what, how do they buy it back? They trigger the price through the lows, induce all the selling they can, and buy into that selling pressure to close their position out. So in addition to that, if again, if, if they're coming into non-farm and they've already made the, move, made the move and profited from that move, generally there's going to be some profit taking. So again, that was just another additional factor we were talking about in the room, expecting some profit taking, and, and that does look like we had what we had as well in combination with everything else we were looking for. So I hope this video was useful, guys. Uh, if you have any questions on it, feel free to email Chad and I at daytradingforexlive at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you, member or not, if you have any questions on, uh, on what we're looking at for the setup. So until next time, guys, happy trading.